Hello people. Today we are going to discuss something called as packages and multi-threading. We are also going to see a few other things but uh, these are the core concepts which we are going to cover today. Today as I've already mentioned we are going to study packages and multi-threading. So before we do get into packages and multi-threading uh, I would be quickly revising what interface is and then we can jump into something called as packages, what packages are, how to create and name those. Then we would get into something called as access specifiers where I would be talking about what, uh, what are the different types of accesses and all those things. Then we would get into a new concept called as exceptions and we would understand what are the different types of exceptions and how to handle those. Once we are done with it then we would again learn some other things like uh, multi-threading where we would learn what thread is, how to implement those and how to use those. Finally, we would understand and implement multi-threading in detail. So this is where I would be resting this session. So let us move ahead and quickly revise what interface is. Basically what John is doing is he's promoted these days, he's a senior programmer. So there are quite a few freshers who are supposed to join in the company and one of his colleagues or uh, his so-called members, asks him, team members, asks him to take a session and leave the session so that he can train the other employees or freshers who are new to the company. And John readily agrees saying yes, well, why would I not? So John kind of introduces himself as in what himself as in what he does and that he's a senior programmer there and the fact that he wants to share his knowledge with his so-called newly joined colleagues. So the topic which he is supposed to discuss is interfaces or the one which we are supposed to revise today. So John starts by giving an example of remote which is a very good example. Now what John says is we have so many types of remotes but while we do build these remotes we have particular specifications or implementations which are kind of common for all the remotes. Say for example the power button, the arrow keys or the navigation keys basically those are something that would be common for most of the remotes and can be used as features which would be like implemented in almost every remote that is there while we are creating those remotes. So interfaces are similar to these specifications or these features that remote should basically have. So interfaces are something that are used to implement the expected behavior of a system or a data type. Now as we all know that Java does not support multiple inheritance but it definitely supports multiple implementations of interfaces basically. So yes, a class can actually extend only one class but it can definitely uh, implement various interfaces. So what is an interface? It is nothing but a set of method declarations to be specific abstract method declarations. Now if it does not need to have the method body but only method declaration. In order to use an interface in a class we use the keyword called as implement. In case you don't override all the methods in the class, the class has to be defined as abstract. Now this is also an important point to know. An interface is same as class except the fact that class can be instantiated and we know that interface cannot. You cannot instantiate an interface no matter what you do. An interface can be defined by using interface keyword and the name of the interface. So instead of saying class shape, if you are creating an interface you would say interface shape. So that is how it is named and this is the example interface. Interface 1 is the name of the interface. So what happens basically is an interface will have a set of abstract methods. Your class will implement the interface and use those abstract method with its own definitions basically. So where do we use these interfaces? Uh, to give you an example we have the banking example. Now we all know that we have different kinds of accounts. Say for example a savings account, a current account, joint savings account etc. So no matter what kind of this account is it would have few features or specifications which are common. Just like the arrow keys and power buttons in the remote as far as an account or a bank is concerned we would be having these features such as withdrawing or deposit money. So these features are something that would be common for all accounts and instead of uh, like what we can do is we can just go ahead and create an interface for these accounts and let these interfaces or their properties be defined when a particular class kind of extends these interfaces. So this is a program, a simple program where interface area is created and we have a class called as rectangle which implements this area and thus goes ahead and kind of prints the value of the area. So what happens in an interfaces? Basically as you can see a class is kind of implementing an interface 
and we have an abstract class which implements this interface which can later be extended by a subclass to implement those uh, interfaces that are then the so called abstract class interfaces can be extended yes packages so what are packages basically to keep it simple packages are nothing but a way of organizing your classes and methods better suppose if i could just create a directory where i could place the classes which are more similar or frequently used together and place them inside a box now that box or that directory is called as nothing but a package so yeah that is what a package is basically packages uh, in the same class can access each other's package access member so uh, the classes of the methods which i have put inside the same package no matter what access specifier they have they can access each other so this is something that we are going to discuss in the next concept that is what access specifiers are and how can i access the so called elements or the classes and the methods in packages to do that we use a keyword called as import but um, let's not jump to that for now just let's try to understand what a package is so you can think of a package as a directory or a container which holds similar classes and methods basically so why packages again it helps you to determine the classes easily uh, it helps you to reach your classes quickly and easily in your directory secondly there won't be name conflicts because you would be naming them and storing them as per the packages basically and uh, you would be able to access those with ease because uh, you know that similar packages are together so naming conventions for given packages you have to understand one thing that we normally write the name of packages all in lower cases now that is not a mandatory condition but that is the standard way of more or less writing packages to give you another example um, not another example but another important convention for naming a packages say for example i work for a particular company and i need to name a package so what i do is i basically use the naming conventions as far as the company is concerned if i'm working on their java project i would be using the naming convention of the company so say for example now i am doing this session for edureka basically so edureka the uh, the domain name for edureka for their website is uh, edureka.co so i would be writing my package name something like this co.edureka then dot and then the name of the package so here they have given us an example already um suppose the name of the company is example.com so we would name it something like this com.example. dot my package or the name of the package basically another important thing you need to understand is when you do select domain names for your so called websites the domain names uh, can be different say for example what if i have something like an a hyphen or maybe a special character what if it begins with something like a digit an illegal character which is kind of reserved when it comes to or which is not reserved or reserved for your so called java keywords so now say for example we have something called as int in java which is a keyword and if int is something that your company's domain name holds so how do we deal with this situation so in order to legalize your so called package name what we do is we kind of convert it using underscores say for example your domain name is example.int so what i would do is i would name it something like this int underscore dot example so i am using underscore to distinguish my so called java keywords from the names which i have used or the domain name which my company uses another example is 123 name dot example dot com i can write it as com dot example underscore 123 name so that is how you basically name your packages and this is how your so called packages are stored into your directory so what i would be doing is i would be quickly moving into the editor quickly giving you an example of how packages are and then i'm going to come right back where with the presentation and we are going to discuss something called as access specifiers so let me quickly switch to our so called editor and give you a sample or a small example of how to create packages in java so let us now go ahead and try to create our new project here what i'll be doing is i'll be just quickly going in here creating a new project java project that is and let's name it say module 4 there you go say finish no and i have my project here in that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and create a package now so let us see the naming convention i would be creating it for edureka so say code dot edureka dot uh, let's name it say one there you go 
and I say finish. So I have a package here in my SRC basically. So let me just go ahead and create one more package and this time let me call it say co.edureka.2. There you have it. I have both my packages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of classes as well. Say let us call it say one and let it be a class without your so called um, public static white main, a simple plain class. And let's just say one for my second package. I'm going to create another class. Let's call it say client. And this time, let's have this thing called as. Yep, so there you go. Now, this is my client class, and you can see there is a package address already given here, or the package which is being used here, which is co.edureka.2. And here we would be having co.edureka.1. So both the packages are created and we have subsequently created classes under them. So each time when I compile these pieces of codes, what will happen is the so called byte code would get updated or stored in these packages. So there you go. We have our packages and we also have their um, gone ahead and created respective classes. Now next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these classes to understand something called as access specifiers, but let me just quickly go to the presentation and tell you what access specifiers are basically. There you go. Uh, now what I've done is I've actually skipped out on a couple of slides before I moved into the editor. So let us quickly take a look at those slides. So as far as the question is concerned, we have this question. What is the advantage of having all the related classes in one package? Now to be honest, what it does is it kind of organizes your classes into one group, one container, more of one module is what I can say. Second, it becomes easy accessing all these classes and you can have access to all these classes with one keyword or something like that. So as you can see, yes, we can just, it gives you a modularized approach. It becomes easy to handle because it is easy to copy a, a given class from one location to another or like having access to your methods also becomes easier. This is something that we would be learning in access modifiers basically. All the classes in the package can be loaded at one time by using uh, something called as import or star characters basically. Now this is the program which we just saw. Uh, your package was created and a class was created under it. So packages and import. Basically what happens is uh, within a package you can have multiple classes. Now we, what we saw was just one package and one class under it. But under a package you can have multiple classes and those classes can have multiple methods. Uh, these methods can be accessed by another class which is in some another package, but that depends on the access which you have basically. Uh, this, this is the syntax basically to import a given class or a method, not a class. You can also import, import all the classes in a given package by using this keyword basically. And finally, you can also have access to static members. So thank you.